I usually start by addressing the head, neck, and face. And the first thing I like to do is introduce myself. Um, for me, the, the mouth is one of the crucial areas of a horse's, you know, concerns to performance, to training. Um, and so if there's stuff going on in the mouth, in the, uh, in the masseters and in the pole, uh, you can have a horse that likes to shake its head or you can have a horse that's kind of really resisting in the bit. Um, so these are really important areas that we have to look at. Um, so I will usually palpate through the, right through the molar area here. I always like to take a look and see what we've got going on. These younger horses tend to be losing teeth at this point. You know, maybe they're a little sensitive to uh, collection or even taking the bit. So we look at all that. Um, and actually one of the big joints that has a lot of concerns in a lot of disciplines is this TMJ, this mm -hmm. muscle right here in the joint, in the, in the masseter muscle here. So we look at that and I feel for reactions. So he's at this point, you'll see him kind of bob his head a little bit when I go to palpate into areas of his muscles and the joints. Now, muscles and joints, muscles control the joints. Um, so that is one crucial area of massage therapy is making sure those muscles are functioning properly so that they can control the joint properly. So I, I palpate through all of the regions here in the body. And what I'm doing is I'm actually palpating on both sides. So I will palpate on the left side and I'll palpate on the right side. If I get more of a reaction to the palpation on the left side, that's what I'll come back to and address in my massage session. Same with the pull. He was very sensitive to pull palpation. So you can kind of see where he's starting to get a little bit more worried about it. I will palpate to see he says, oh, yep, that's sore. So it, right away, I don't have to keep going and, and pressuring him in that pole anymore. I know that's an area that I'm gonna have to come back and work on. Um, big concerns for a lot of disciplines, cutting horses, we kind of know how they move, what they look like when they're actually in performance. Uh, they use their, high, their front end a lot for the actual movement, but they really have to engage their hind end to keep that movement going. So we can really see some, some tightness and some issues through the shoulders. One thing that a lot of people um, either aware of or not aware of is the horse's shoulders actually have no bone connection to the spine. They're actually in a shoulder, what we call a muscle sling. So the shoulder blade is, is really only attached to the body through muscle on the inside of the shoulder blade and muscle on the outside of the shoulder blade. So there's no, they don't have a collarbone is essentially what we're after. So a lot of this muscle work here behind the shoulder blade can get uh, restricted and that movement um, for them going back and forth can you know, decline, and so you might see decline in performance. So we want to keep those loose. Stretching is a fantastic way for owners, which we will go over at, um, when we're all done here, to help keep that muscle working properly. So when I palpate through his hind end, what I'm looking for, and you can kind of see there that the muscles actually feel pretty decent, but when I palpate, there's the joint here in the hip called the sacral iliac joint or SI joint, which is a lot commonly used um, among the vets and, and trainers and, and horse owners. Um, it's a, the joint itself doesn't move uh, very much as far as like a, a large um, lower limb joint, but it can actually cause a lot of issues in the hind end. And so they may not be performing as well in their stops and their turns um, if this joint has any restriction. And usually that is due to these large muscles in the hind end. So we want to make sure that those are nice and loose.